starts for real, wherever you're going to. These people are about to be dropped into the unknown. They have no idea where they are going or how long it will take to get home. All they know is that somewhere on this planet, they'll be lost. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. Do you have any weapons? Do you have any illegal substances on you before we start? Yeah, all those things. Do you have any pyrotechnics? No. Do you have any credit cards? No. Okay, take your shoes off. At the start of their journey, they are strip searched. Any money or valuables are confiscated. Maybe enough. Hang out. Up. Oxygen. Is, a uh, private jet with blacked out windows will take them on a six hour flight to a secret destination. So that's it then. This is where we begin to lose track of ourselves. Into the vortex. Their mission will be to race back to London from the drop-off point. The first team to touch Nelson's column wins £5,000. Each person will have $200 cash, three days food and water and a basic survival kit. Where they're going, they'll need it. On arrival, their eyes and ears are covered for the final leg of their 10-hour journey. They've been granted special immigration clearance, so the identity of the country remains secret. The six contestants have been split into three teams. Mel is a hardcore Man United fan who has fought many away games. Football travelling is definitely going to stand me in good stead for going on this trip because it is get as far as you can on as little as you can, jibbing trains, um, jumping on buses, basically not paying for anything unless you get severely asked to by people with batons and that. Ruth craves adventure and needs a break from teaching. I like to think I'm a fairly good teacher and I love teaching but it's kind of not enough, which is why I've got all these other jobs outside school, because I, I, I need that constant challenge, even though it terrifies me at times. I actually need it. Come on, come on, give us some sound. Deep in the Somerset countryside, Tom, a lone inventor, is always on the lookout for a crazy solution to a problem. This is the wakey. This is your alternative solution to the alarm clock. So instead of waking up to that annoying ring, ring and beep, beep, you just... I spend a lot of my time on my own ideas. Most of my days are spent here, so I'm just in need of some good old human interaction. Herb Tree is a devout Rastafarian who okay. believes his fellow human beings will help yes, him home. Can, Sophie, what question have you got? How do you get back from your holidays? Yes, how will I get back when you've got no money and you don't know where you are and the people might not even speak the language? Shana? Walk. Walk. Can I skate? You can roll the skates, yes. They can rescue you. You can rescue me? Yeah. Okay. The people are the answer to all of it. All these human beings and all these individuals around the world, there's a lot of love around the world. So it's a new age, okay? And and hopefully, if we can get back without money, we'll be able to show people that it's, the world isn't all about money. Charlie is keen to escape his job. He imagines being able to navigate like the great explorers of the past. I haven't actually worked with things yet, but there must be a way when you land, how you can work up from the stars and stuff where you are. All right, because people do. I mean, like going Captain Cook and uh, and Darwin, all these people. They've been doing for years and years and years. Galileo, all these bots. They've been doing. It's not that hard. Sarah is a cool-headed businesswoman who thrives on boardroom battles. She plays to win. It's all about reaffirming our credentials 
and our credibility as a one of Europe's leading suppliers of sugar. I'm naturally competitive. I like to be a winner and I always like to be the best at everything. And if something doesn't work, just keep going and look for something else. And if one plan fails, just think of another one. Just sit there and think, right, what's the next maddest thing I can think to get me back to England? On touchdown, the blindfolds are removed and the 3,000-mile race back home begins. Once they are dropped, they are on their own. Even the single camera person accompanying each team has no idea where they are. It looks, like, it looks like Scotland, but it isn't Scotland. It isn't Scotland, it's just... We're in Scandinavia somewhere, I yeah. think. We're possibly on the top of... I'm trying to remember all of that maps in my brain, like... Oh, that top a bit of, uh, like, Finland and Norway and stuff. I reckon we're probably a little bit further north than that. But are we assuming, right, that we've gone... that we're somewhere in the northeast of Europe? Yeah? Is that a fair assumption? No. No. What do you think we are? I don't know. <laughs> I tell you what. Um, there's a hell of a lot of water around here. There's a building over there, yeah. and if there's a building, there must be a road to the building. That's it. And if we find a road, then we just follow it. Uh, I, reckon the building, I reckon the building, personally. So we got to pack up, move on. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to walk that far? Well, I just want to look around the corner and see what these are. While Charlie and Sarah head inland, Tom and Herbtree check out the beach. The only signs of life are the mosquitoes. All I know is there are a lot of mosquitoes around. What that? I don't know. Just beyond the beach, Bonjour. the boys spot a cottage Bonjour. hidden in the trees. We found a bloody town of dwarfs. We're giants. Yeah, it is like Hansel and Gretel. It isn't made out of sweets. No. Nah. Oh, look at this. This is brilliant. I found that this. I place, though. I'm not going to assume that we are allowed to stay in this because no, to me this yeah. looks like the home of a troll yeah and look do you know what i mean the troll has got his things here still he's got his things yeah. his firewood already put there all that's not here is the axe which he, the guy's still got the axe on him and he likes to use it on tourists apparently well, let's hope not but, well maybe it could be all blair witch couldn't it while the others set up camp for the night charlie and sarah try to steal an early lead by midnight, they reach the buildings, but there's no one around. Come here, we'll see what this says. What do you think that, that symbol is? This is radiation. <laughs> yeah. You two said, let's walk to the house. No, we did, we did, we did. But at the same time, if there's sea over there... Ten I think you're mad. Night. Charlie ignores the radiation warning and leads the others inside. Well, look at this. Yeah. Well, it's the only 4K wide. Is it going to be Russia? I don't think it's going to be Russia per se. I think it's going to be one of those exact Russian satellite places. Estonia, Lithuania, that kind of stuff. Russia's not noticed for its. Uh... Returning outside, they settle down for some fireside philosophy. Sarah is curious to find out what makes Charlie tick. So do you do much travelling? Nah. Since I got divorced, not divorced, separated kind of thing, I, I, I don't go on holidays anymore. I, don't go, I just go watch football. I've regressed, unfortunately. I've given up on the world. I can't be bothered with this fucking game anymore. Mortgages, bollocks, pensions, bollocks. And I hope I don't live too long. <sighs> Picnic in the woods. Picnic Over by the, the Trolls Hut, Tom's finding out how Herb Tree got his name. It stems from a 20-year love affair with marijuana. On this trip, he'll have to survive cold turkey. I'd say it's really great. I mean, not having smoked any ganja today, you know, a little bit of tobacco. But it's really good because I don't feel any. 
stress or need no. that I've got to have a split or anything like that. <laughs> Something. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the drop zone, Mel and Ruth are focusing on tactics. We've got to cross whatever that is. <laughs> water. Fjord, sea, whatever, who cares? <laughs> it's water. Oh, what makes you so sure that's the right way to go across? Instinct. Yeah. Mm. I think definitely the going along the coast thing, because cause we're bound to run into some trawler or something like that. There's mm. boats and things, and, which means people. What the teams don't know is that they are on an island so remote that it became a notorious prison camp. Escape will be difficult. There's only one way off. The next morning, Mel and Ruth leave behind their packs and begin a search along the coast to find out where they are. So empty wrappers and things there, next to that thing. Fire mix. Excellent. Fuck me, it's in Greek. Oh, my God. <coughs> Is it Greek or... That stuff. Um, Coptic, is that the word for it? What's it say? Finland! Finland! It fucking says Finland on it! There. It yeah, because they speak say. something silly. You see that? Well, yeah, it is Finland. It's Finland there. Never eat shredded wheat. So Russia's going to be over there. Right. And uh, Norway... No, sorry, Sweden's the next one along, is going to be over there. And home is that way. Excellent. It's in the south. Yeah, it's definitely that way. Having set off at dawn, Sarah and Charlie have walked non-stop for six hours. Their strategy is to keep pushing on in the hope that sooner or later they will hit civilization. You know, and you just think, well, you know, if I keep walking, eventually. <laughs> the sight of reindeers worries Sarah. She's convinced they've been abandoned somewhere in the Arctic. I really thought years. it would be a bit of a doddle. I thought, well, you know, they can't, they can't kill us, really, can they? I mean, if they put us somewhere really no, we, remote... We, we can kill us. I mean, us. the likelihood of us being dumped here, the weather could have been absolutely atrocious. I mean, we could have got frostbite on the first night. I'm dead. <laughs> Fucking people there. 